Hi, this is David Cantu, the founder and CEO of the Coaster Challenge Network and the executive producer of the Coaster Challenge Podcast. On behalf of the entire Coaster Challenge Podcast team, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you out there for your love and support these past two seasons. From our family to yours, we would want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is, the most listened to radio show on the planet even the other stations are tuned in to. How's it going? This is Kyle Smith, the manager of Creative Show Operations here at SeaWorld Orlando, and you're listening to the Coaster Challenge Podcast. Hi, I'm Adam Floyd. I'm the Senior Marketing Sales Manager at Wild Adventures, and you're listening to the Coaster Challenge Podcast. Hi, this is Adam Sandy with Zamperla, and you're listening to the Coaster Challenge Podcast. Hi, I'm Courtney Weber, Director of Communications at Carowind, and you're listening to the Coaster Challenge Podcast. Do you accept the Coaster Challenge? Yes, I accept the Coaster Challenge. Do you accept the Coaster Challenge? Coaster Challenge Podcast is here. It's time to face your fears. Get that theme park therapy and let us both your Coaster ears. Challenge Podcast is here. Your fear can disappear. We know that theme park therapy can dry up all your tears. Do you accept the Coaster Challenge? Yes, I accept the Coaster Challenge. Do you accept the Coaster Challenge? We accept because you know we're not average. You're listening to the Coaster Challenge Podcast. A journey where people become fearful to fearless, all from riding roller coasters. So please secure your hats and glasses and keep your hands and arms inside the podcast. It's time to accept the Coaster Challenge with your host, Kim Dykes. Hello, everyone. This is Kim with the Coaster Challenge Podcast. Today, I'm talking with an awesome guest. I'm very excited to sit down and chat with Matt Newell, a coaster enthusiast who is also an editor for the YouTube channel, FYE Coasters. Thank you for joining me and welcome to the podcast, Matt. Hey, thanks for having me. Well, I am so glad that you were able to be here. I remember we met back in 2020 and we've since become friends through social media, meetups of parks and that sort of thing. While we've gotten to know each other reasonably well, there's always more to know. Will you please share a few things about yourself with our listeners and me? I love coasters. Um, I consider Cedar Point or Kings Island my home park because I'm right in the middle. It's the same direction at both, same amount of time, both directions. I help run FYE coasters. I do post on Instagram, Facebook, sometimes YouTube when I have time. I work in manufacturing business, making baby diapers. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> It's interesting that you said manufacturing because that just turned a light bulb onto my brain. Something uh-huh. I don't think I've ever shared with you. When I went to college, I had to work during the summers. I didn't, my parents didn't make me work through college because I needed to focus on my studies so I right. could actually graduate. But uh, my dad worked at Brand- Brownie Manufacturing. They were a, a sprocket and gear place basically he worked there for 38 years and Uh I did shipping and receiving in that factory every summer and being in that place with no air conditioning hot dirty boring sitting at a desk most of the time staring at a clock staring at a clock was the one thing that motivated me to (laughs) keep going back to school and finish because I absolutely right. hated it with a passion. Right. I did end up going to college, but I, I didn't go through with everything I was studying. So, yeah. My problem was the job I had, it was either really busy or dead. Uh-huh. And staring at a clock all day is just not my thing. Right. <laughs> I've got to be time moving. goes slow. Yeah. I've got to be moving. And then that way the time goes fast and I'm enjoying what I do. Yep. (laughs) Okay. So during this first part of the interview, we're going to do basically the time capsule, the walk back in time with roller coasters. Uh So you want to think back as far as you can possibly remember all the way back to probably when you were a kid. Do you remember what your first coaster was? My very first, I 
cannot remember. It's some kitty coaster, but I know my first big coaster was Vortex at Kings Island. It, I did not want to ride it. I was with my sister and she made up a lie saying that mom would not let me stand by myself while she rides. So she forced me to get on it. I was terrified. But when I got off it, I really loved it. And that's, I think that's where my love for coasters started at. That was when Vortex was new and better. (laughs) You don't say. That's actually funny because that was my first big coaster too. I did it on a dare. Uh I I grew up being told, we went to Kings Island once a year. Everything was scary. Uh Uh-huh. And um, the only thing they would let me do was they would force me to spin in tight circles, which I still hate to this day. Yeah, me too. (laughs) I hate it. And um, they wouldn't let me do anything I wanted to do that looked like fun. And so eventually, after so long, I started being scared because I was told they were scary. Yeah. And uh, it was my senior night at Kings Island. The whole senior class of my high school went to Kings Island and that was in, I'm dating myself a little bit here, <laughs> was in 94. And everybody was in the group was going to ride Vortex. Uh-huh. And I didn't want to be the odd man out, the only one standing there not riding. And I can't remember exactly what the people I was with said to me, but I finally got on the thing <laughs> and wrote it. And my response after I got off of it was, what have I been missing? (laughs) Yeah. It was actually fun. I want to do more. (laughs) Yeah, I know. That's how I got started. I know we, when I was younger, my family always went to Cedar Point once a year because my mom's work picnic outing was always there. I rarely ever got to Kings Island, but that one time I did go with my sister and rode Vortex. Yeah, the ones I remember riding before I took a long break from riding coasters, I rode that, rode King Cobra. I never got to to ride that. I loved King Cobra. And um, I rode Son of Beast with the loop. Yeah, I I remember that. With and without. And... um, after that, I didn't start riding coasters again until Jay wanted to start conquering fear. Right. And that wasn't, I didn't even get on Diamondback until 2018 uh-huh. was the first time I rode that. So there's definitely been a whole lot happen oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in the past few years. Okay. So going back to the coaster time capsule. Thinking back in time, what would you say is the one coaster that has scared you the most? Scared me the most probably was when Top Throw Dragster first opened, waiting on that launch for the first time. Scared, not knowing what it's going to feel like, not knowing if I'm going to like it or whatnot. That was one, that ride caught me off guard. Uh huh. I was eerily calm like the calm before the storm uh-huh. going all the way through the line queue it doesn't look that tall <laughs> then i sat down in the seat and that's when i began contemplating my life choices right <laughs> my hands were shaking so hard <laughs> i could barely get a hold of the bar to even hold on <laughs> and that's when you know right anymore i don't watch povs because i like to be surprised i i yeah. don't watch povs unless i've you know ridden the ride and experienced it already i try not to watch them but sometimes i, I know it. it's like the candy <laughs> dangling in front of the baby like, oh, right. God, i really shouldn't watch this but i kind of <laughs> want to and i did but anyway um that was when I was actually thankful that Jay had made me sit down and watch top thrill dragster POVs <laughs> over mm-hmm. and over and over again. <laughs> he had told me exactly what to expect, 
what sounds it was going to make uh -huh. when it was getting ready to launch. Because I, I literally think I would have passed out in that moment. Right. <laughs> Not that, <laughs> that thought to hang on to. Uh -huh. And, um, but you know, after we wrote it, I was overjoyed and wanted to do it again, but I was pissed off at myself because everybody else put their hands up on the launch except and me. You didn't. No, <laughs> I'm like, I'm not, I'm not leaving until I do it. Uh -huh. It took me five times in a row, five times. <laughs> and I kept thinking I could do it. And I put them back down again. I don't think I did on my first time, but I can't remember. I kept watching the kids and try. I would literally sit there during the, before it launched and put my, put my hands up and I'd go back on real quick. <laughs> and it took me five times to finally push past that fear. Right. And then after I did it, I, of course. That was after your Diamondback. Yeah, right. yep, yep. This was after Fury 325, too. Oh, okay. I held on for dear life on Fury 2. I had to go <laughs> back. Last year was when I went back and got my vengeance on writing Fury correctly. Right. But, um, and then, of course, after I finally did it, I had to, I had to do it again. Right. <laughs> to make sure <laughs> when I came back the next year, I'd be able to do it and not have a problem. Uh-huh. Yeah. And it was actually on that one last year. I was not happy with Jay. I wanted, it was, it was our last night of our trip last year. I wanted to go finish the night at Still Vengeance. He was just insistent that we go to Top Thrill Dragster. And I'm like, well, I'm going to Still Vengeance. And I actually did head that direction. And then something was telling me to just go back to Top Thrill Dragster. I don't know why I did it because I didn't really want to do it. But right. we got six night rides in a row that night. And then this year, you saw what happened. Oh, yeah. So, well, last year, but yeah. I'm glad. Yeah. Well, you know, it's shut down. Yeah. Never know if you're going to ride it again or not. No. But got King to Car coming up next week. So <laughs> I'll take that. Right now. Front, I'm right riding front. in the front. I'm not going in the back. I've heard horror stories about that. <laughs> I actually did like the back of Top Thrill Dragster, but I don't think I'm brave enough to try that in King to Call. That sounds painful. <laughs> All right. So going back to that first ride on Top Thrill Dragster, how were you feeling when you approached the station? Nervous, scared. Wondering if I'm going to survive. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't a huge coaster enthusiast back then. I was just mm -hmm. riding when I could. Yeah. That's kind of where I was. I guess I was kind of thinking I was an enthusiast at that point in time. Uh -huh. But I wasn't like counting credits or anything. Right. That came later. I don't even remember when I started doing that. Uh -huh. Or what <laughs> prompted me to start doing it. I, yeah, just I, did probably, it. I probably started counting maybe five years ago. Yeah. And there's some, I count everything I can remember. Yeah, me too. Like I went to, I know I went to Kentucky Kingdom once, but I don't know if I rode any coasters or not. Uh -huh. So I've not counted Chang, you know, or any of that because I, I don't remember what I did. Right. And you'll be able to count that next week though. Yeah. And I went to, <laughs> I went to Disney World once. It was when I was a freshman in high school. I can't remember what I did. All right. Nope. It's just a blur. So yep. I'm counting it. Yeah, I just counted what I remember too. Yeah. All right. So when you got off of Dragster that first time, how were you feeling when you got off the coaster? The adrenaline was pumping. I was ready to go again, waiting in that three hour line. And I think I actually did wait again. I was, it was at that time the best thing I ever ridden. You waited three hours. Oh yeah, I kept breaking down. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. Some things never change, but yeah, it, it kept breaking down. But I waited. I don't know what my second wait was. The line was a little shorter, but I don't know. Oh, One night I was there waiting in line till 
I think it was 2.30 in the morning when I finally got on. Only the strong self survive. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds exactly like something I do. I tried oh, to wait, but well, the last time we went up to Cedar Point, they shut the line down because still vengeance went down. And we were still alive for last stream. I would have waited that out as long oh, yeah. as they told us to wait. And they told us we had to leave. Uh-huh. I tried to pay them under the table. It didn't work. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and they were like, oh, we have to evacuate people off the tram. I'll go get on a train if you'll evacuate <laughs> me, please. All right. Yeah, I'd love to get evacuated off that. That and a, a rollback. I still haven't had a rollback. Have you ever had a rollback? Yeah, I had a rollback once on Dragster. It oh, was oh, it was man. a great experience. I've Front seen I've seen rollbacks. Like last year, there were literally rollbacks. Not one, but two. Both trains in front of me. I'm like, it's uh, only going to happen. You didn't get it. I still didn't get it. <laughs> it's one of those enthusiast dreams I'm still chasing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One of these days. Either that maybe, or you'll just, get it, maybe you'll get it on car next yeah. week. You better just get stuck right at the top of the top hat. <laughs> <laughs> that was very sit, rare that man. happened i know but man <laughs> i could die in that moment and be perfect that, that view would be amazing up here <laughs> yeah i don't think anything better could ever happen to me in my life It'd be fine <laughs> to go right then and there <laughs> <laughs> all right so after getting off that first ride on top thrill dragster would you say that it had an impact on your life after riding that coaster? I don't know if it had an impact on my life. It just made me realize I can conquer pretty much any coaster after riding that, going to, at the time, fastest in the world, tallest in the world. Yeah. And I think it's one of those things for me, a lot of impacts have happened without me really realizing it. Uh -huh. You know, it's a story I've shared with several people. Fear, you figure out over time, it's all in your mind. And if you can contain your mind in one situation, you can contain your mind in every situation right. outside of coasters as well. Right. You know, weight loss, it's in your head. Yep. It's every bit in your head. Oh, yeah. And the only thing you can't do are the things you tell yourself you can't do. Uh -huh. you know and listen to other people tell you you can't do it right getting a hold of this yep and keeping a hold of it and um you know one thing i've struggled with a lot during my life and just i fought to overcome and i'm succeeding now is i was raised to be very codependent keep everybody happy you don't make anybody mad Right. Doesn't matter how much you're sacrificing yourself. Uh -huh. And if you make anybody mad, there, there's going to be heavy consequences to pay. Right. And, you know, that instills fear. Fear of standing up it for yourself. Does. Fear yeah. of standing up for yourself. Fear of doing anything that anybody's not going to like. Right. And, you know, I don't even know how and when it happened, but all of a sudden... I, I'm confident. I'm confident enough to say no when I need to say no. I'm yep. completely fine if others don't like. Don't like you. Don't like me. Don't like the response I'm giving them. Right. And it doesn't bother me. And it's just surreal to so, me. I still well, have to, it's surreal to me sometimes yeah. that I can handle myself in situations. All right. I'm like, did I really just do that? It still just floors me sometimes uh -huh. what I'm able to do. And I will still sometimes feel that lump coming up in my throat, not my stomach in certain situations. I'm All right. like, no, you're not going to back down. You're going to do this. All right. And you're going to succeed. And that's, you know, really the impacts that 
amusement parks, coaster riding, thrill seeking have had on me. Yeah, and pretty much me too. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons I don't want to stop. Right. Me neither. I don't uh, get I, out as often as I can. Yep. And I, I don't ever want to go back to being that person. Right. <laughs> that's not me anymore. Uh huh. And I, I like this me a whole lot better. Yep. <laughs> and I, but I have to, but I've got to do what fuels my soul. Right. And it's, it's, you know, they've noticed a huge impact in my performance at my job. You know, my enthusiasm with the kids, my energy level, everything. Yep. And uh, everybody at work now that used to think it was kind of weird, they're all on board now. I mean, I'll be walking down the hallway and they're like, hey, Costa Queen, how many new coasters you've been riding lately? I mean, <laughs> I, the whole staff's on board. The kids, they know, you know, like when I went on the uh, podcast trip back in October, they yeah. were all cheering me on. They all knew to look for a yellow spirit as soon as, <laughs> as, soon as I came back. <laughs> they wanted to hear all about it. I mean, it's like literally... You know, the people that have been with me there for 18, going on 19 years now, have seen the change. Definitely changed, yep. And, uh, and you showed me some of the stuff that your kids have done. That's, yeah. that's pretty cool. They're all, they're all about it. So, but it's, it's great that it can just, you know, apply across all areas of life. You, just, yep. you don't know oh, yeah. it's happening until it happens. Yep. But then once it starts happening, it's addictive and there's no turning. You don't want to go back yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So thinking back over all the coasters you've ridden all over all the years, and this can be amusement park related. It could be on rides or anything. What would you say has been your craziest moment on a coaster or in a park? I can think of a few. <laughs> <laughs> couple days ago i got my first ever zen ride on orion that was crazy even though i was by myself i didn't think i was going to get it the people there were people coming up the stairs right behind me and i was in line for the front and they chose a front too so they had four people if they would have chose a different seat i wouldn't have had the zen ride Ooh. so yeah, and we all know you got the Zen ride because you posted yeah. pictures of the entire every row <laughs> <laughs> empty frame. <laughs> That's another. Yeah, I'd thing. have to think about that for a while. Something else crazy, but I've got a couple. I think Andrew and I told you about that ride on Hagrid's, didn't we? The shitty ride. Yeah. On Hagrid's. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a stink train. <laughs> it was all the way through the lion queue. We kept smelling it. it was just, uh -huh. The closer you got to the people in front of us, the stronger the smell got. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was so bad. Everybody in the lion queue had their noses covered up with and shirts had, or whatever. And, and they, they had people, no idea. No. <laughs> completely clueless. And my exact words were, my God, please just don't let me get on that train. <laughs> no was you on that and, train i don't remember no there was one no. poor single rider that got stuck on that train with those people <laughs> we called that the snake train uh-huh yeah there was that and then um my rain ride back in 2020 on orion with the mask on it's the last train of the night didn't start raining till right before we got on it was so board. bad when I got off from that dumb mask. Water was all the way up my nose. I couldn't breathe. I right. yep. couldn't see a thing. I had puddles of water in my shoes. I had to go all the way to the car like that. And then we went, I remember we went walking into that infamous speedway. People stared a hole through us. <laughs> and we that could not stop laughing. Woman. We were laughing like hyenas. <laughs> People probably thought I was drunk and I didn't care. It was just, <laughs> it was one of those laugh or cry situations. Yeah, we had a meet. I was with Gene and Larry, of course, on Orion for last train one night, and it was like 40 degrees, pouring down rain. I never seen Larry shiver so bad in my life. Yeah, it was crazy cold. And then you, 
you heard the story from Dollywood behind that infamous word. I'm not telling that one again. Uh, no, yeah, yeah. no, that's 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 a Wee. story that needs to go away. <laughs> You're not allowed to say that on here. Wee. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so moving on through your coaster riding time capsule. Out of all the coasters you've ridden, what would you say is your favorite coaster? Feel Vengeance. As if I didn't know that one already. <laughs> <laughs> just what is it that you love about Still Vengeance? I just love the airtime on it and the length of it. I like the length of it too. Yeah. That is the only thing bad about it that is the mid course brick run. But as long as it doesn't hit, it's still fine. Now, I mean, have you ever ridden it where it just totally doesn't hit at all? Yeah. Yep. That night ride I had when the lights were off, that could be another crazy one. My last ride of the night where they were doing rewrites a month ago or whatever. Yeah. It did not hit at all on both rides that we got. And it was pitch dark because they had the lights and the structure off because of the mayflies. And it was crazy. I'm going to have to make it a point to go when the mayflies are out. <laughs> yeah, you missed it, what, by two weeks, I think? I guess I just need to show up when the mayflies are out. <laughs> that was the first time I ever seen them turn the lights off on the structure, too. So I've never I don't know. gotten to experience that. That would be absolutely awesome. Oh, yeah. I don't know if they probably have to kick me out of that. <laughs> All right. Um, so... On the flip side of the coin, so Vengeance is your favorite coaster. What is your least favorite coaster? The worst Vortex thing you've at, ever ridden. Vortex at Carowinds. That's another thing we agree on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I'm not a big I'm not a big fan of stand-up coasters, and that one just was literally painful the whole time. It was a one and done. Yeah. The main thing I remember about it was my legs felt like they were going to explode and my head got beat to death. Uh huh. I don't remember much else about that ride. Yeah, usually those than... restraints don't bother me, but they got me that on that ride. Yeah. The only thing I remember is I wanted off. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much from the bottom of the drop on, I just wanted off. And when I've been there, it seems like it has a decent sized line too, and I don't understand that. <laughs> you sound just like me. <laughs> <laughs> You're rubbing off on me. Oh boy. That's what it is. I swear. <laughs> we were at Carolyn's even this past visit just a few weeks ago. It was literally the words out of my mouth. But that thing still got a line? <laughs> hey. I don't know. I don't even think doing the um, floorless conversion would help that right. No. And people get mad at me on Facebook when I get on there and <laughs> rip and tear that ride to shreds. <laughs> so, like you always rip, ripped and ripped apart my ride, Magnum. Hey. So you learn how to ride it. So you need, that's, that's going to be your challenge. You're going to have to ride Vortex at Carowinds until you learn how to ride it. Uh, hopefully it's not <laughs> open when I go. <laughs> it gets better. <laughs> Very yet, both of us will just ride and whoever, <laughs> whoever, la whoever the last one standing is wins. Or bring the painkillers. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> okay. So where I'm going to switch the topic a little bit now from the coaster time capsule to fast forward to the year 2022 we're going to switch now from coasters to talking about theme parks for a bit thinking about all the theme parks you visited what would you say is your favorite theme park you have visited and why is it your favorite theme park probably islands of adventure when I went there for the first time this January, I just, it was like nothing I've ever seen before. The atmosphere is totally different. Not a big theming person, but I really love the theming there. It's just a total different experience when I went. 
that place is theming on steroids. Oh yeah. That's one I'm used to I'm used to Cedar Fair's theme. So. Yeah. <laughs> lack or lack their their <laughs> <laughs> It's stereo like that. Uh. <laughs> that and that was what struck me about Islands of Adventure. Honestly, I mean the place is fun, but uh-huh. for me, once you've ridden these majorly, you know, extreme themed dark rides. Once you've ridden a few of them, for me, it starts to kind of become redundant to a certain point. Yeah, a lot of those screen rides don't go well with my stomach, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my head and my eyes. <laughs> but, um, you know, the coasters are fun. Uh-huh. But you know quite well the only reason I'm there, the only reason I pay that amount of money to get in there is the coaster. But so, you know, outside oh, of <laughs> Hawk is actually my favorite sit down. I actually can yeah, ride that nice. one and enjoy it. A lot of people say it's rough. I didn't think no, it was. Totally no, I still rough. have to keep my head back on it, but it's a lot better than yeah. the rest of them that I've been on. Right. But as far as the theming goes, it's so odd. Islands of Adventure, it's not even for the rides. I just love being there. Yeah, you want to talk too. about an escape from reality. Yep. And it's so strange because there's no thrill rides in the whole area. Uh-huh. I could literally live over there in the Seuss area. I mean, <laughs> then go in there. That, that's, that's my that little area, happy. But... <laughs> that's my little happy place over there. I think we pretty much just walked through it quickly a couple times. Oh, I could submerge myself. Did that it's... cat in a hat ride? Oh boy. I could just sub- submerge myself in the weirdness of that area. It's <laughs> totally me. Oh, I love yeah. it. <laughs> and that's, that's one of the reasons why I love that park. It's just not, it's not even mostly about the rides per se. It's the total escape from reality. Right. And it's not something you get to see and every I day. I just live in my weird little offbeat fantasy world in <laughs> Swiss land. It's just a joyful occasion the entire time I'm there. I can be completely by myself and it's fine. Yep. <laughs> okay. So Islands of Adventure is your favorite park. Let's talk about some bucket list places. Let's go back to coasters for a minute. Like what are some of your bucket list coasters? To ride. It would be definitely Iron Gwazi, um, Zadra, of course, both RMCs. <laughs> Those are probably my top two right now. I want to. I'd love to get to. I don't know if I ever get to Zadra, but I know I'll get to Iron Gwazi. You know, Iron Gwazi is my goat. Oh, I know. <laughs> you think? And my 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 number one bucket list coaster. Before I die is that other one you just named. I've got to get there. Uh-huh. Edra, gotta get there. Yep. One of these days. <laughs> it's going to happen. It's very strongly on the radar. Actually, Zadra and Ride to Happiness. Yeah, I Ride to it. Happiness. Looks I good love too. time travelers so much. Yeah. Ride to Happiness is right there at number two. If I could just ride both of those, there would be nothing else in this world I'd ever want to go do. I just do that. Uh, I'm sure you'll find some more you'd want um, to do. You know me. Until yep. tomorrow. <laughs> Something else comes along. It's I call it evolution. I'm evolving. <laughs> All right. So in addition to bucket list coasters, what are some of your bucket list parks to visit? Energy Landia, of course. Uh, mm-hmm. Europa Park. A lot of them coasters and Europe I'd love to go to I'm waiting until two people can pay their own way <laughs> you got one working hard at it I got one <laughs> some threshold uh-huh and to get a good thing too able to do that then I'm then I'm going yeah <laughs> one, way, one way or the other <laughs> I just I can't fund that level of a trip oh no that's expensive no 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 not for three people I'm even, I was going to go to 
California next year, but I'm putting that on the back burner because there's just so much prices of everything. Prices are crazy. Flights are crazy. Gas is crazy. Well, it's not just flights are crazy. I'm sitting there and I, I see these horror stories of people with these lay- layovers. It cuts in yeah. significantly into their trip time. Oh, yeah. And I found out, too, through my adventures from this car wreck I was in, there was a big rental car shortage. Uh-huh. And, yep. I, and rental car prices are through the roof. Oh, yeah. I can't imagine showing up, you know, me with my complete lack of direction. Oh, my. It, oh, God. I mean, it's bad enough when I have a car with a GPS to <laughs> depend on. I'm skating on thin ice most of the time anyway to get from point A to point B or point Z, wherever I wind up in the meantime. But, uh, I can't imagine showing up at an airport <laughs> trying to get a rental car and not being able to get one because they don't right. have any. I mean, that would be a nice. This is the stuff my, my worst <laughs> nightmares are made of because I can't get around anywhere anyway. Uh-huh. I, 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 I would lose sleep <laughs> over this. <laughs> so, yeah, next year's trips are kind of semi planned, but I'm putting California on the back burner until things settle down oh yeah for that reason i've got a yeah. nephew too you know they've got the new park the new coaster that's opened up out in colorado yeah. i'm gonna go there one of these days too but that's going to require flying yep so <laughs> i'm just gonna sit back and wait and if i okay. can't drive there i'm not going for the time being All right <laughs> okay so as an enthusiast, I'm sure like most enthusiasts, you probably collect coaster merchandise. So I can see <laughs> very nicely displayed behind you in the background. That's just lovely. <laughs> what are all the types of coaster merchandise that you collect? I collect the nano coasters, the coaster cutouts. I got the Millennium Force, as you can see right behind me um i can't see it at all it's too small it's too small (laughs) (laughs) Uh, i collect pins buttons shirts i think that's about it (laughs) i have enough shirts to clothe an army Uh, me too (laughs) (laughs) some i forgot to have go back through my closet Uh how about that one and i've started a fall collection and winter collection now because that's necessary too i've Mm -hmm. filled my pen board completely up i'm gonna have to get another one to start or it's pretty full it'll be full after i put my new king's island ones on there mine is completely full i have nowhere to put anything Uh so i've got to get another one I i collect souvenir cups i don't you know i usually get the paper cup plan but I have cups from here, there, and everywhere when the paper cup plan wasn't an option. Yeah. So I've got those, and I'm I'm actually one of these weird people. I have them hanging on hooks, hooks across my mantle in my living room by the fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> you people may not have that. I do. No comment. <laughs> and I've got <laughs> pictures, my coaster, the whole nine yards. The yeah, whole the button. Nine yards collections i got all of them from i got the whole collection from last year and i finally got it all for this year so far what they've made but i've got that and um the uh, of course i've got nano coaster some of the wood cutouts and stickers on different stuff and i have a bunch of magnets on my refrigerator oh yeah i got a i started a started a magnet collection but it's not very far along I have probably more than I should, but there's, if it's not a coaster magnet, I'll walk away from it. Cause if uh-huh. I were to get into too many theme park magnets, yeah, it would be too much. <laughs> I have to know when to say stop. Very expensive hobby. For real. But one, that's one thing that's nice when you get in the right parks, you get a nice little pass holder discount. Yeah. 
Yep. The bush sees the bush sees this count is really good. Oh, yeah. this, they have like forty percent. Yep. It's that for me that just opens the door. <laughs> oh, Cedar Fair is ten. Buy even more, yeah. Cedar Fair, you get like ten twenty percent. It's not enough. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to talk about coaster trips. What are some of your most recent coaster trips and what trips are you hoping to do next? My most recent big coaster trip was probably Florida in January because I really haven't been able to go anywhere since then except for Cedar Point, Kings Island. We went to, all we did was Universal, SeaWorld, and Fun Spot that trip, but I got into Islands Adventure for my first time, so. Ended up there four days at Universal and Islands of Adventure. And Got my old rides on um, Velocicoaster. <laughs> I wish I could stay there that long. <laughs> well, I ended up buying a pass because I knew we was going to be there at least three days, so it would have been cheaper to get the pass. Definitely makes sense to do that. It cost me I remember it was like four hundred dollars to get three people in there for one day. Oh yeah, oh yeah, just for one park. Yep, <laughs> it wasn't even to go to the other one, but I'd already been to the other one. So, uh -huh. what trips are you hoping to do next? Well, I know next week I'm not horribly or terribly excited about it, but I'm going to probably Michigan's Adventure. Woo! Yeah, Woo! yeah. <laughs> And I'll probably stop at CJ Barry Moore's while I'm up there. That'll be just a day trip. I do that and come back same day. But I'm hoping to, I need to get to Bush Gardens, Williamsburg, because I've never been there. Oh, you need to go. Yeah. I'm hoping to get there by the end of the year, but we'll, we'll see. Pant I'm out of vacation. I'm wait, out of vacation. Wait. Nudge, nudge. You need to ride Pantheon. Yeah, we'll see. Me too. <laughs> Close as CJ Barrymore's to Michigan's Adventure. It's still, uh, it's like two and a half hour drive. Okay. It was longer drive than I thought it would be, but I'm like, I, I might as well do that while I'm up there. I well, also probably, I also probably hit up one of them hamster wheel things just to do it, get it done and over with. I, there's one not too far from Michigan's Adventure. Yeah. I stuck the kids in the hamster wheel. I'm you didn't do it. <sighs> tight circles. <laughs> it you. I don't know if you realize just how bad tight circles mess me up. They mess like, me up too. Especially it'll it'll out. ruin my whole day. Yeah. Like I can't do anything. Right. After it literally shuts me down. Especially if it's 90, 95 degrees, I definitely can't do it. Why well, I just part of me wanted to try it to have the experience uh -huh. but part of me just said don't do it yeah, i've heard just, heard bad things we just had so much more we wanted to do that day uh -huh. and i remember the last time i decided to be stupid and sure Ruined i've got used to circles by now i can do this it was a beach bend last year. I didn't I didn't want to do anything mm -hmm. the rest of the day. I couldn't even ride this. I mean after that, I mean literally anything. What'd you I ride? Could, I couldn't. It was the uh oh I think like at the fair, they used to call them the Tempesto. There's two of them. And they spent like opposite of each other. You stand up in it. Down. No, you down. stand up in it, and there's like this know. little chain that goes across your waist, and there's two like circle cages on each end, and it does one of these numbers. I'm not even sure what that is. <laughs> oh, well, I remember them from the county fair when I was a kid. <laughs> I got on that thing. I couldn't even ride the scrambler after that. I felt like I was going to puke. They want to the rest of your day in Kentucky Rumbler. It's actually a good little GCI. I yeah. like the coaster, it's fun. Yeah, 
And it's very appropriately named the Kentucky Rumbler. I mean, the last time we went to the Beach Bend, I loved that thing. I could ride it all day. I tried to ride Kentucky Rumbler one time after that. I left. Nope. I mean, we literally left. <laughs> I couldn't do any. I could barely drive home. Right. I had to go home, come home and go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> the nauseousness was unreal. And I just, I was dizzy and lightheaded the whole day, but I couldn't do anything. So, nope, I wouldn't try the hamster wheel. <laughs> I'd probably do it at the very end of the day somewhere. This will be just... probably before I get to Michigan's adventure. So it'd be at the beginning of my day. Uh, I, could go <laughs> I, I would do it if and I didn't go, go sleep it off. And then go Michigan's adventure for them painful rides. So yeah, it's going to be a painful experience. Shit retimbers is fun. That's about it. So what I'm excited the rest, for. The rest of it. Tear it down. <laughs> Every bit of it. <clears throat> All right. So now we're gonna talk about FYE. Tell me about your work with FYE coasters. What unique contributions have you made to the channel? Pretty much all I do for the channel is just post on Instagram and um, Facebook. When I have time, I do YouTube channels. I've done vlogs in the past, but I ain't done one of those in a while. Okay. I don't think I'm that good at it. I hate seeing myself on TV. It's when I get time, I'll do a few other videos here and there. Yeah, it's definitely weird for me even doing podcasting. Now I'm starting to get my own interviews back to edit and hearing my own voice. Right. God, I hate hearing my voice too. I'm like, Ey. it's different to say yes. the least. And I'm sitting there when I'm listening and editing and I'm nitpicking apart, not what the other person's doing, what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, going back to FYE, what are some of the things that FYE does to make a positive impact on the coaster community? You know, you mentioned earlier that there are definitely some negative things in the community. What are some of the things FYE's done to make that better? We just try to do positive posts only. If we see something in the park we don't like, we try not to do negative posts about it what a lot of people don't like to see is negative posts like mm -hmm. a lot of these pass holder groups it's all negative 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 yes and complaining all the time yeah so we try not to do much of that on our stuff well and i know another thing you all have done too are meetups meetups yeah yeah we try to do meetups at king's island not enough um, fye fans go to cedar point to attempt that yet so yeah because FYE started by Josh, and he's a Kings Island boy, so that's how their fan that fan base got started up. When did you all start having those meetups? What year did we meet you? Twenty twenty. Yeah. What year did you all start having the meetups at Kings Island? Because you all started having those before I met you all. I know I joined FYE in two thousand seventeen. Okay. I can't remember if we had one 17. I think it was either 18 or 19 we started. Okay. I can't remember any of my first year. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I first met Josh and Adam at the winter walkthrough at Kentucky Kingdom in 19 or 2020. Josh knows he can always remember the year <laughs> I forget and I remember I didn't even know who Jeff Brooks was he was the woo guy woo. that's <laughs> he was right all over Kentucky Kingdom yelling <laughs> and he took that picture of me and the kids that Josh shared a while back at the walkthrough from a few years ago we were wearing coaster kids shirts uh -huh. that was the first time I met them and then I remember when I went, it was not this year, but last year, I think it was, yeah, it was 2020 when we had to wear the mask. I saw Adam 
at Hollywood Nights. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, that's when he went. Twenty twenty. Yeah. And that's when I got to talk to him more. Uh -huh. And then I saw them again at Keys of the Kingdom. Uh huh. I think we spotted you once at Holiday World. Thinking you spotted. Back. I saw you getting on Voyage one time at Holiday World. I remember. Hey. <laughs> way back, I remember spot. I just remember seeing you there. You didn't know who it was. Uh oh. I was just a shadow at that point in time. But um, <laughs> it's weird how things evolved. Oh, and I think it was, it was. It's just the thing I've noticed is the more events I go to, the more places I go, the smaller the world continues to get. Oh. <laughs> and every yep. time I think. I've met everybody I'm going to meet and I've made all the friends I'm going to make. I find, uh, I find more people. It's just right. how it happens. Okay, so would you say that being involved with FYA coasters has impacted your life or has it given you the opportunity to impact the lives of others? I guess it's impacted my life to learn more about coasters and the coaster community. Well, I can say definitely from the meetups and stuff. Yeah. You've, you all have met, definitely managed to bring people together. Uh huh. We've got our own little coaster King's friends, Island group. King's Island group and stuff that never, <laughs> yeah. never would have come to be right. without FYE. And yeah. I, I definitely meet new people. Mm -hmm. And I remember Lindsay telling me how she met you all she's like yeah there was a meetup and i was the only one that came <laughs> she told me about that and um you know just kind of looking at where she said you know that started when she got involved uh -huh. and looking at the network right that we have now and how that continues to grow it's one of those yeah. things too i think you're having you have impacts that you don't really see don't really realize yeah but others can definitely see it Okay, so we're down to our last two questions. Uh -huh. Our next one is going to center around advice. And you know, this, this can be advice pertaining to anything. You know, thinking about our listeners, any type of struggle that they might be facing, it could be something in their personal life, it might be, you know, maybe they want to start facing fear. Maybe they want to start riding coasters. Literally anything at all. What kind of advice would you like to give to those that are listening? Pretty much just to face your fears, to get over your fears. The fears are possible to get over. Like my fear of vortex back in the 80s or 90s, whenever it was. I wrote that, and that's what made me start liking coasters, getting over my fears. Absolutely. And like we were discussing earlier, once you start facing one fear, it's a domino effect. Right. And nothing, pretty much nothing's impossible. So. Absolutely. The only limits that there are are the ones you place on yourself. Right. Yep. Okay. And that brings us to our final question. Where can we find you on social media? FYE on all the, all the social networks at FYE. Um, my personal, and it's changed. My personal Instagram is Matt. Snool. Oh, is that it? S-N-E-W-E-L-L. -L. 0981. Yeah, it's my first, real first things. name, which is Steven. So S N E W E L L 0981. My Twitter is Matt 090181. And my TikTok is Matt 0981. So. And then okay. I'm on Facebook too, Matt Newell, N E W E L L. Okay, well, thank you so much. Yep, thanks for, for having me. joining me this evening. Yeah, thank you. It's been a joy to talk with you. Thank you so much for being my guest. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And if you want to see more of us, we upload every Friday. And check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all at Coaster Challenge. 
Links are in the description below. Thanks for joining us here today.